How's it going folks? Welcome to another farm vlog with James and Rosa here at Tappanoff Farm in Aberdeenshire, North East Scotland. And we've got a beautiful sunny day. We've just gone over the autumn equinox. Can definitely feel a bit of autumn in the air today. The leaves are just starting to turn colour. The nights are getting longer. The temperatures are dropping. So I'm up here in the North Field, which unsurprisingly is a field that lies to the north of our farm and I'm searching for the sheep. They've been up here for about 10 days, up in this very wild area of the farm. It's our least designed area of the farm. Um, we've on the whole have just grazed it now and again throughout the years, but it's a great place to put the animals because there's a lot of natural shelter, including this stand of Sitka spruce that's behind me. And I think the sheep are hiding in here. So they're just, getting some shade I guess they're out keeping out the wind getting some shade in there so we're gonna move them today though because um, they have done a very good job uh, eating this place down on the whole over the last 10 years it's been a very wild space predominantly raspberries um, but since grazing the goats and the sheep in here over the last year and a half they've made a dramatic change to that and we've got a lot more grasses now growing there's a lot more grazable areas and we want that, we want this. I mean, we've got plenty of raspberries to pick, um, but we do have quite a few grass eating animals here at Tap Farm. And uh, so all the better to have a bit more grass coming through for them to eat. But we need to let this field rest now and we're gonna move the sheep today to an area just above our market garden. And this is an area we've planted up to hazelnuts and chestnuts as a kind of nut silver pasture so silver pasture being grazing and tree production in the same space, meaning we can move the smaller livestock like our sheep and the geese in between these rows of trees using electric netting to protect the trees. So allowing them to graze on the grass without damaging the trees. Um, and then over the coming years, we'll start to think of the trees as a crop. So the grass is very long in that uh, chestnut, hazelnut, silver pasture. So perfect to get the sheep in there just now and let them take advantage of that. I'm gonna creep into the pines here and see if I can say hello to the sheep. So here I am inside this area of Sitka spruce, a non-native species in Scotland, widely grown here for a long, long time now um, as, as a crop, um, but can be very useful for protecting livestock against harsh weather conditions. And so I guess you class this as a living barn, somewhere the animals can get out of the snow and the driving rain and wind. Uh, and get some respite from those weather conditions. Hello. So um, we're gonna end up probably high pruning some of these trees just to make it a little bit more accessible for us to get around. Um, but right now it's just, yeah, perfect for the sheep to come and get some time in. So the sheep are doing great. Um, we've had them almost a year now and uh, planning to bring in a tup or a ram uh, in November, Shetland tup, to be able to get these ewes uh, in lamb, uh, which will be the first time we've done that. So we've got Christina, who's the brown one, uh, Murit, and she's definitely the most friendly. Uh, she has always been the bravest and the most friendliest one, but I think over the winter of coming up here every day and feeding them hay, she really got to know me well, so she's over friendly. She's a bit like having a dog. You'd be walking through the field and you'll feel someone, something pawing at you and uh, turn around and it's Christina and she will even jump up just like a dog to try and get some attention. Then we've got Sana, the kind of gray, white, black one, really beautiful fleece. Um, she's can be friendly sometimes, um, but still pretty timid. And then Belinda, the white one, she still isn't that friendly, still very um, wary of humans. That's fair enough, I guess. And that might change. Right, I better make my way out of these woods. Go and find Oren, who is barking away in the background somewhere. Here he is. Good boy, Oren. Gonna go out this way. 
This leads out um, of this little pine wood and into a more a planting of more uh, native deciduous trees. I'm very lucky to have this area of woodland on the farm that was planted by the previous owners probably 15 years ago if not longer. Lots of beautiful trees like ash and wild cherry, hawthorn, oak, birch, rowan. Uh, really beautiful. This is me basically coming to above our large pond which is at the top of the property and I'm going to go down and get some nets, some electric nets now which are rolled up. The sheep were in the west field um, and then we set up this laneway of electric netting to get them from the west field just below our shepherd's hut which should be peeking out in a minute behind me here. There it is. So we had the sheep in the top of the west field and we made an electric netting um, laneway to be able to take them easily because these sheep don't herd very easily they've got more of a scatter mentality than a flocking mentality so it's quite hard to get them to go in the same direction so using the electric netting we brought them over this bridge up this little hill and into the north field which is behind me there so that was nice and easy um, and this move today should be relatively easy because I can make the next grazing cell just butt up against the edge of the field that they're in now and should be able to just move them in. Christina, like I said, is very friendly and um, that's great. That helps me out because she'll follow me, no worries. Uh, and then the other two follow her. Got one of the sheep nets and I'm just gonna make my way a different way across the farm. Gonna go through our new area of forest garden. Haven't been able to show you guys this properly yet. Just haven't found the time to do a devoted vlog. Um, but I will do. This was an area that we started working on earlier in the spring. Cutting down trees here, high pruning the alders, and then planting a whole bunch of different fruit trees and shrubs and herbal ground covers to create multi-layered orchard as such. Um, putting in ponds. We will make a dedicated vlog on this sometime soon, I hope. Um, but for now, I'm just cutting through that said forest garden through this little forest garden. Here we go, we've got some lovely plums behind me. This is what we call the duck forest garden because we used to keep ducks up here. Um, this then pretty much follows a contour across the farm of forest gardens. And where I'm walking now, this is the original forest garden. This was the first forest garden that I planted in about 2014. Got some aronia berry still on the bush. Surprised the birds haven't got those. We've been eating them quite a lot recently. Um, so yeah, you can basically walk through many areas of different forest garden. Some plums, some different types of plums. That was Victoria that we just saw. That's a sar plum. Many areas of forest garden. Of course, the plan with the whole farm is to think of the whole landscape as a food forest, um, which we're slowly getting there. So here I am walking past the top of the market garden. This is a young forest garden tree row that we were mulching in a video a few weeks ago. It's doing very well. And I'm just coming past an area of wood fuel coppice, this hybrid willow, which is huge. It needs coppice this winter. And then that leads into this nut silver pasture where I'm gonna be working today. This area of chestnut and hazel and a few alders. We started planting this in 2019 um, with the main aim of this being a wood fuel production area. Um, we've chosen to plant chestnut here because it's one of our most sheltered spots on the whole farm 
and um, while we would love it if we could get some chestnuts uh, we're not holding out on that completely and more we're focusing on the timber that we can get um, so treating this as a coppice with the hazel and chestnut both very good coppice wood and um, the potential for many products from that high quality wood um, but at the very least and very important to us to be honest is firewood potential from a sustainable source because obviously once we cut these trees down at ground level they will coppice so these trees won't die when we cut them at ground level they'll just regrow produce multiple stems and then we can leave that to mature to whatever size we're after um, so it's a long game but uh, means that we'll always have a continuous supply of very nice um, either firewood or craft materials or if uh, things change for the climate we could have a lot of chestnuts we'll certainly get hazelnuts but of course if you're going to be coppicing them that might stop you getting um, reliable nuts through the years because there'll be certain years that the trees are very small again after cutting them we've interplanted with alder again for us that's a great firewood supply very fast growing um, species very tolerant to our conditions here but also as a nurse crop being a nitrogen fixer the alder we've planted between the chestnut and the, and the hazelnuts so the sheep were last in here end of spring beginning of summer and we actually grazed them laneway by laneway for instance where i'm standing in between these two rows of trees we put an electric net up between the rows and kept the sheep our three sheep just in this quite small area that gave them about a week of grazing and then we'd just move the grazing cell down and gave them about a month of grazing in here today i'm not going to be so specific there's a lot of grass it's um, very overgrown but this will be fine for our hardy sheep this hazel here towering above me now growing very fast great aspect south facing here protection from the westerly winds um, adequate water supply we've got a lot of water here not too much because the chestnuts wouldn't like that but they're growing away I mean look at this chestnut here again I'm six foot three and uh, it's towering above me so enjoying it very much there's already um, some electric wire up there which is keeping the sheep in the north field and we're going to attach this new electric grazing cell to that one I'm going to put two nets together see how much of an area that allows me to contain and I'll be dictated by the size of the netting we've got for that and then just let the sheep in it's difficult growing agroforestry systems with tenacious browsers like sheep and goats but it's definitely possible wind's really picking up good thing is where I'm working is very sheltered so just another reason why we planted the chestnut up here just to give them the best possible place they can grow oh, still pretty windy though so I've managed to put up the electric netting very rough and wonky shaped electric grazing cell this will be the first of a few moves down this hill of hazelnut and chestnut silver pasture but they're going to start with a larger one up the top just now closest to where they are to make it easy to get them in to where I want them um, it's very nettly um, not the best of grass very lots of thistles uh, but it'll start get them going there's a lot of ground elder up there for some reason so I'm sure they'll enjoy that 
And then once they've grazed this after a few days, I can open up at this join after putting another net in this cell between these two rows of trees and they can graze in there. So I'm just going to put in some corner posts so that this is nice and strong. There's too much grass growth at the moment that's going to make it even worth trying to electrify this. I know that sounds a bit risky. Our goats and sheep at least don't seem to test the fences that much. They seem to just associate the netting with a boundary that they can't cross. So we're not too worried about having to electrify the netting. Um, so that means I can put it through a bit more longer grass than, than I normally would. But I do want it to be rigid and tight so that they see it as a boundary. to put in some corner posts got it nice and tight and also put in some of these step in uprights that we've got left over from cows actually that we used to have here we have to put these in occasionally because we often find that the rolls of netting or the rolls of wire don't have enough uprights in them you often have to buy them separately but we find that these work um, just as well at giving a little bit more rigidity to the fence and acting as a visual boundary so much of the animals work on visuals we used to find that just putting up white cable old electrical cable putting that up um, along the laneways where we wanted the cows to go often they would keep within that section because they see the white cable as being electrified even though it wasn't so it's just what they're used to Cool, all right, well, now it's the best bit. Time to go and find the sheep and let them know that they've got some new grazing to come and explore. Come on, sheep. Hey, sheep. Great, they're tucking into some plantain and nettle seeds. Yeah, and this will keep them busy. There's some willow growing in here that they can eat. We're okay with that. Very diverse mixture of things for them to eat. Best part of it, not always great fun putting up grazing cells or new paddocks. Be very annoying working with the electric netting and the wire getting in a tangle and walking up and down the hill and banging in posts and having to clear grass away from the lines so it's not always my favorite job but this is the best bit of it letting in the animal seeing them explore new territory getting able to observe to see see what they enjoy eating and just knowing that they've got some entertainment <laughs> 
knowing that their minds are being stimulated yeah makes it all worthwhile all right guys i hope you've enjoyed today's vlog obviously no rosa today but she sends her best she couldn't be working with me today but i'm sure we'll catch up with her again in the next vlog hope you're all doing well out there uh, if this is your first time to the channel please hit subscribe that really is great support for us here on the farm until next time i'll see you soon see ya